Hello, welcome to Quack Talk. I'm Crystal. It's Happy Tuesday. Let's talk about sex. No, it's not the kind of sex you want to talk about. Today, we're going to talk about healthy, body positive, beautiful sex ed to kids. Now, you've all been kids before, and parents, if you have young kids, join us our conversation. Not just young kids, old kids, because you know we need to, from time to time, reassess our views, our values, our concept of sexuality. And I've got some two great guests here who have the best healthy positive attitude about this. Let's welcome them now. They are representatives of OWL. What is OWL? It is our whole lives. I'm going to have them introduce what this is all about. Next to me, I've got Gabe. Gabe Tianganko, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. And Rev and Kyle. Kyle, love it. Aloha. Rev Kyle, welcome. Aloha. <laughs> so will you please uh, educate our audience on what OWL means, first of all, before we kick into the topic? Well, let me begin with OWL. Okay. And we have our mascot here this morning. Uh -huh. And uh, OWL actually stands for Our Whole Lives. And Our Whole Life expresses our belief that uh, sex education is a lifelong process of acquiring information and developing attitudes and values. So like an 80-year-old man can still reassess what his concept of sexuality is. Exactly. Absolutely. And we actually have the program for that age group oh, good. as well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's exciting. Yes, yes. Okay. And the uh, OWL is a positive, comprehensive, um, age-appropriate program Great. that uh, promotes sexual, uh, sexual information. Okay. Yeah. And this is catered to schools? Do you, you have this program that you go into schools to give workshops? So we have been in schools. Um, there are uh, agencies around the nation that have used this curriculum, even though it comes from two religious organizations originally. It's uh -huh. completely secular. Okay. There's no religious content. But it comes from faith, the faith position that we are beautiful, that, that sexuality is healthy, um, and people should be whole. Uh, so, so Planned Parenthood has used it, and schools have used okay. it, and lots of churches have used it. Well, can that, I just tick on to your tag on to that religious aspect? I know sure. you say it's non denominational, but religion and sexuality have a huge um, influence and, and, you know, the direction of how people are educated about sexuality. So how is it not related? And depending on, let's say you go to a Catholic school and how they introduce sexuality as opposed to a Jewish school or what, it does affect how they see it, no? So the underlying values, yes, are affected by the face faith stance that creation is beautiful and that there is um, divinity present in the universe. But the curriculum itself doesn't say, and God says do this, or okay. and... It's total secular. It's, it's secular okay. in that regard, but it comes from, from a values undergirding that um, is, a, is a very positive one. So, so that's the distinction. There is actually a, um, a component, uh, a separate curriculum piece that you can use sort of to open the class and close the class um, with a religious ceremony. You know, light a oh, candle right, and okay. invoke the presence of the divine. Mm -hmm. but, but it doesn't have um, specific dogmatic approaches. Right. It really is about wholeness for the human being. But are there some areas that kind of step on certain religions' toes? For example, LGBT issues that certain religions don't really support? I mean, how does that work into the program? So one of the, um, there, are, there are five circles of, of topics within OWL. Yeah, and I'm going to read them because I don't have them memorized. <laughs> right you here. don't? Shame I, on you. Know, you. It's on my wall, but that's right. why I can refer to it. Yeah. <laughs> so sensuality, intimacy, sexual identity, uh, sexual health and reproduction, and sexualization. So it goes to both the sort of the, the, the positive and negative aspects of the wholeness. Um, and it does touch on LGBTQ is issues and um, the various identities that people have. One of the ways that the earliest curriculum talks about um, sexuality is to talk about different families. There are different families, and we know here that there are lots of different yes, families, right? Yes, blended all the way. So, so yeah. that's one way of talking about, and there are also families that have two fathers. There are right. also families that have, you know, single parents, etc. Right. Oh, Hana, it's great exactly. here in Hawaii. Yeah. Um, so we do cover diversities. Yeah. Right. In terms of stepping on religion's toes, there are many different voices within each religion about any kind of sexuality topic. Maybe some of them are more quiet than others, right. but they're there. So no one has um, a claim on speaking for the divine in terms right. of LGBT or in terms of sexuality or um, one's expression in the world, gender expression in the world. Right. Yeah, so, so it would be stepping on toes only in the <laughs> sense that Yes, we talk about everything that needs to be talked about. Good, I mm -hmm. like that. Yes. Now, but when we're now that we're still on the LGBT issue, you know that that's a big current topic in world news as well as in education. I think. Sure. And how has that changed the sex ed? 
within the younger classes. How do you even approach that, or is that something that you have to modify over the years because of the current changes and attitudes? I think we're teaching them from the very gut go, the reality, mm. that in their life today, they'll have to come across the mm. LGBT community. So we don't brush that off to the side. Good. We teach them that that do exist, and on that subject, we teach them respect, respect for themselves, respect for others. Mm -hmm. And loving others and loving your neighbor like you would yourself. You know, kids come up with the darnest questions. Have you had anything in that area that's been sensitive and you're like, oh, how do I answer that? You know, it's, it's a, the class starts out at kindergarten. Okay. So at that, at that level, they're not too concerned about it. <laughs> yeah. But because it's taught in the lessons, you start to educate them. And yes. as they get older, the questions come out. In their elementary years, they have a few questions. And as they get older, the questions sort of broadens on the LGBT community okay. also. Okay. Yeah, w one of the things about the curriculum is that, or in terms of the teaching, the facilitating of the classes, is that we're taught to just receive all the questions without reacting with um, startle or derision or, or anything so that we don't prejudice um, young people against um, asking questions. Right. That, that questions are really valuable and important. Right. So we have to maintain our facial expression and maintain ourselves so that we don't <laughs> go uh, giggling or right, like, no giggling or no poo-pooing something. So we do get questions that are sort of Get out throw of, one out. Okay, so one of the questions we've had is, so what is your favorite sexual position? Wait, what age group are we talking about that asks Junior high. Junior high. Junior high. Oh, okay. Junior high is the most robust curriculum um, of the whole series in part because that's mm -hmm. when you really need sort of all the information. Somebody asked you that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What your favorite position is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how did you answer? There are lots and lots of positions that people engage in when they are being sexually intimate. And my favorite position may not be somebody else's, but what you need to do is you need to explore what is an appropriate boundary for yourself. What you do and do not want to do um, with your body and what pleases your body and what doesn't please your body and be really clear about what you um, okay pause uh. <laughs> no, no, that's good. okay pause now scenario that yes. situation what if the, that person goes home and says mom um, the teacher today the philosopher said that um, I'm supposed to explore the positions mm. that I like well what happens unique then? to our program the parents are part uh -huh. of the, the, yeah. the, the class also so the parents attend the class, the children's in one room, the parents oh, okay. in one room. Yes. We required. are working on the yes. same Good. material. Yes. We are working on the same scenario and exercises. So by the time the children and the parents leave the class, there's a lot of conversation in the car. Okay. <laughs> and so you're up and up with the, uh, the, yeah. the and yes. so, and it becomes a more comfortable um, conversation with the parents right. because yeah we're working on the Excellent. same issues yeah and as far as questions excuse me um, a lot of the children are not front with their questions uh -huh. so we have a question box of course at the end of the day the questions you're not able to right. share right. put it in the box and it's discussed the next day anonymously good and good. so at, at least the question is answered okay well that's a pretty bold one to be not <laughs> yes yes anonymous. they do <laughs> yeah they yeah. do in right. the junior high Right, yeah, absolutely, when we get comfortable across the weeks of the class. And well, because of the classes designed, uh, yeah. where it's a, it's a comfortable atmosphere. So you're all and like just kind of... And it's a non-judgmental mm -hmm. atmosphere. So by that age group, they're totally comfortable. If you started at the kindergarten and yes. then the fourth grade level, by that age group, they're open with questions. So it's and never yeah. too young for a sex ed? Cor well, people start learning about their bodies from infancy right. right people explore their own bodies and then they get messages from their family their parents society about that exploration right. and what the, whether their bodies are good or bad or whether the things they do and what they touch. and the different organs i remember when my oh, younger yeah. son was like three and he said something like oh yeah i need to do something with my vagina because she heard his older sister say that yes. Yes. so they don't yeah. really know the differences and it's really quite charming yeah. and our program is age appropriate so okay. the kindergartens don't get the same material as the junior high oh, my. and yeah. in the kindergarten they're learning more about themselves their okay. body and verbiage, correct verbiage. Like no touch, respect, that well, kind of thing? Absolutely. Yeah, well, if, if you, a lot of scenarios where the, the child maybe um, culturally, they, yeah. they yes. have, their body parts are like their language. Right. And a lot of parents, they teach their children, um, what is it? Colloquialism, slang? Yeah, yeah. slang names for body oh, parts. Oh, right, and, okay. And yeah. the actual, so uh, if you have this names. kindergarten, the so, playground, yeah. yeah, how do you say And it? she hurt her vagina, right. and she, she comes to the class, and the teacher is somebody from Colorado, okay. and she said, my punani, <laughs> Jimmy hit my punani, the Colorado it's teacher like, goes, oh, oh where's it hurt? Okay, where is it? <laughs> you know, so communication is really important. Yes. So at that young age, they're learning the correct verbiage. And in the very beginning, it's hard for them to say vagina. Yeah. But by the end of the class session, the kindergarten, 
kindergartens are saying vagina, vulva, good. you know. Oh, good. And they're comfortable with those terms, and ah. that's where it starts. Good. And that's why it's important to have the parallel class for the parents, because most parents feel like they don't have adequate sex ed in order, themselves in order to talk with their children. And so if the kids are in a class, the parents want to know what the kids are learning so that yeah. they too can speak with calm and, and accuracy. Right. And go back to uh, our age and what we had when we were growing up. What right. kind of sex ed would we have? I remember those videos. Yeah. And you separate the kids. Don't they still separate them though, right? I believe so, And yes. you need to sometimes. Under the assumption that yes. the world is binary. Right. But again, all they're <laughs> teaching is the basic mechanics, male, female. Um, what happens when you go to puberty, right. what happens if right. somebody gets All pregnant. All those 80s videos, you yes. know? Yes. And, and, the then, and then the subject is dropped at that point. But in our program, there's so much conversation going on. And uh, not like the classroom. So it's how do you explain sexuality, like lovemaking to a four-year-old? A four year old? What's the language? Or do, does that not even open up? At a four-year-old? four-year-old. Four well, don't we ask, how did I come here? You know, Oh, well, how babies come how from. Babies. Yeah, we do cover it in the kindergarten. And we often have show and tell because when we have baby, you know, when we have young, the owlets, I call them, when we have young <laughs> owls, um, we often have families where somebody is pregnant, right? So we can bring a, a pregnant brain. person in and yes, people can, yes. you know, touch the oh, tummy good. and feel maybe the baby kick. Nice. Yeah. Healthy stuff. But they come with those questions at that age. Where do I come from, you know? Right. And besides just the material, there, we have a lot of books and a lot of uh, illustration right. books for the children to look at, you know, tummies and the fetus and how the baby is developing. Are they real pictures or are they cartoon pictures? Can be both, you yeah. know, depending on... Yeah, line drawings. Yeah, right. Or, or like, like the old-time life. Remember the old-time life one with how a baby is made? Yeah, yeah, was? yeah, sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, from my so, generation, not yours. But they won't have a graphic vagina for like a kindergarten no. class. No, that's <laughs> the age when do you When do you, what's age appropriate for that? Junior high? Not junior even. High. There is, there is, yes. Yeah, so actually, kids are, are sexualized, um, sexually yes. active in fourth, fifth, sixth grade. Oh, right. God, no. Oh, it's, about, it's about that it's age. Is that the fact? It's, it's hard to hear, yeah. 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 Is that worldwide? Mm. Mainland U.S. is where most of the stats are from. Um, more four, so in fifth, today's fourth, generation, fifth more so today. Yeah. Not and it's just going back to the hormones with the chickens and how it's affecting all of us growing and maturing faster and periods coming earlier. I mean, how, why? Well, and also the, um, the dynamics that have changed in, in society, right? We have way more information. Kids have access to social, social media. media. Yeah. Movies. And, and misinformation. Yeah. That's what we're about. Is like pornography. Misinformation. Yeah. And even music portrays all that kind yes. of information. You know? And they've got body. ears. They hear it, you right. know. And so, yeah, and parents are in denial when it comes to ch um, their child's education. They don't want yeah. the child to know anymore. Nobody thinks their kid knows anything more. Yeah, and they blame it on the other kid for infecting them, right? And, 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 and they do. And also. they think that their kids shouldn't be learning things at the age that they're at, but the reality is they're learning from infancy. They know more than yeah. we do. They know more. And, and much misinformation, again. Yeah. We, they know things that they learned, you know, behind the school gym rather than... In fact, yeah, when Pono Choices was introduced, I remember some parents coming out and saying, oh, Oh, those videos were too graphic. I had the same response. I thought too graphic, but you know what? They're out there. They're exposed to that kind yes. of. So why not just give it to them in a comfortable, acceptable environment, and then going on Google yes. and looking at porn? Gabe, hold that thought because I think that's we're touching onto some juicy areas here. Let's when we take a quick break, we'll come back and talk about how pornography and other online uh, exposures can affect or mislead uh, our kids and their views of sexuality. We'll be back. So. Don't Aloha, my name is Josh Green. I serve as Senator from the Big Island on the Kona side, and I'm also an emergency room physician. My program here on ThinkTech is called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'll have guests that should be interesting to you twice a month. We'll talk about issues that range from mental health care to drug addiction to our healthcare system and any challenges that we face here in Hawaii. We hope you'll join us. Again, thanks for supporting ThinkTech. Aloha, I'm Chantelle Seville, host of the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. Now we are on a mission to help young women and girls achieve their dreams and looking forward to sharing with you one episode a month where a young woman or girl will share her dream or ultimate goal with you and hope that we can all get together behind her to achieve that goal. Look forward to seeing you there. This is Steve Katz. I'm a marriage and family therapist and I do shrink wrap, which is now going to every other week all during the summer and maybe forever after. Take care of your mental health this summer. Have a good time. Do what's fun and take good care of yourself. Bye bye. Can do it. Back here on Quok Talk on Think Tech, we are talking about healthy sex ed with Gabe and Rev Kyle here. Now, I didn't mean to 
you know, cut you off before the break, but we're talking about something that needs a little more elaboration. So you're talking about how pornography can influence or mislead the kids. And with social media, the kids yeah. got their school laptop, they got their home laptop, and we're not there 24-7 to right. see over their shoulders to see what's going and on. And nowadays, kids have to do homework online, so you can't prevent them from going on. Right. And you're not right. going to be looking behind their shoulder all right. the time. So that's why instilling in them values and um, the ability to assess what they're looking at and what it's saying to them, because social media is very influential. Yes. Yeah. Right. Sex sells. Every car dealer knows that. Mm. Right. Yeah. So, so helping kids understand that they're being influenced by the messages that are coming their way, and they may not be true messages. That they need to have their own internal yardstick in community right. about what they're hearing and what they're seeing, and whether that's appropriate or whether it's exploitative. But how how do you uh, educate parents, I guess, to approach this? Because every kid, every parent's going to say, oh, well, they'll try to do as many of those, what do you call those, control, Oh, yeah, yeah, you the know, parental control but things, yeah. it's just useless. Mm -hmm. I've tried it. It mm -hmm. doesn't stop them from looking at things, right? Parents are the first sex educators. Mm -hmm. Parents are always the, they're the closest in. What we do is we support parents. So we give them tools for them to be able to be the, the best that they can be with their, with their kids. Uh -huh. That's part of the, the class itself, and that's part of the curriculum, is to help parents find ways, and also to learn from each other. One right. of the things that happens in, especially the junior high and senior high classes, is that the parents end up being a support group for each other. We talk about yes. the content. Mm -hmm. What are the kids learning, right? So right. that they're informed. Mm -hmm. But then, oh man, your kid does that too? Oh, mm -hmm. whew, yeah. right? Yeah, so they, so what's normalizing? Um, Right. But when you say normalizing, so you said earlier that, you know, s sexual experience is starting younger and younger. And if that's the norm, are we parents supposed to accept that and say, okay, it's all right, you're 10, you can go and do it. No. How do we go well, there? Well, and that's why the, the school um, promotes abstinence. Okay. Okay, that's their main topic, abstinence. And they put a really negative connotation on sex education. Yes. And at this program, we really teach us teaches the children that it's part of life. Yes. You know, and if we can teach them to grow and accept and that things are beautiful and to do it correct and give them the tools to work with, this OWL program provide that whole yeah. uh, atmosphere. So while we don't use the word abstinence as much because of the negative connotation but that goes encourage. with it, we encourage healthy decision making and waiting. So we talk okay, about how it. waiting for sexual expression of a wide variety of sorts uh -huh. um, is often the better choice for people just in terms of personal maturity, right. not just body maturity, what your body wants, yeah? Yeah. but, but uh, internal maturity. So yeah. we help kids with, it used to be called in my generation, values clarification, mm -hmm. right? What is your own value? Yeah, for, for decision making. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So it's not about just because they're 10 and they have information, they're going to go um, explore in, um, sexuality. Yeah. Right. In fact, the statistics show that the more information kids have, especially that's what broadly graded like this, the less likely they are to be sexually expressive. But mm -hmm. do you believe that each individual, whether they're a kid or an adult, they have their own sex drive, their own genetic makeup right. of uh, what true. they want to explore or not. Some people grow up being very kind of asexual and some people mm -hmm. find needs in the high drive. I want to talk about masturbation, for example. That's like a sensitive issue that parents hate to kind of bring up, but they know what's going on. Like, what are you doing in the shower that long? Mm -hmm. Or even mm -hmm. like little kindergartners, mm -hmm. why, are you rub it? why are you rocking on your chair? Mm -hmm. How do we approach that? So um, one of the, the um, reasons that uh, masturbation is such a hot topic yeah. um, is because of Christianity. So there's a story in Genesis, um, it's about the story about Onan. Uh -huh. uh, so Onanism uh -huh. um, is actually um, quitus interruptus, but it's also um, been, been misunderstood or mistaught <clears throat> to be against masturbation. Okay. And one should not it's masturbate. It's like an evil thing, right? Yeah, it's a bad thing. Right. Spilling your seed rather than procreating. Uh, and, you know, the assumption don't is Don't waste it. Don't waste it. There's <laughs> a really? finite quantity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so we have this incredible history that we're working with um, that ha that's very insidious. Like, no, who, like, do you know the word onanism? Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. right? Unlikely. But the teaching is out there that masturbation is bad. Uh -huh. um, and so then we have to explore, okay, so what's bad about it if you okay. know your body? Yeah. yeah? Um, yes, right. It's kind of like um, hmm, pick things, sugar or lihing mui. Anything in excess um, right. might well be bad for you. But um, knowing yourself, knowing yourself is a positive thing. Good. And that sexuality is a natural thing. Right. Going know? back to that yeah. ground. And it's a healthy part of living. 
Right. So in, in this program, the parents are with the child, and uh, we, just, we just went to the fifth, sixth, seventh grade, and we covered all those areas, masturbation. Mm -hmm. and without, How do you cover? Do you have videos that show, or you just talk You about actually it. talk about masturbation, and that, you know, it does, it's, it's a natural process. You know, it comes with puberty, right. and it comes with exploring. And teach them that it's healthy right. exploring. It's not bad, you yeah. know? Yeah, and people get really focused on the genitals, but the reality is all of our bodies, we yeah. are sensual beings, and all of our bodies have erogenous zones. Right. So part of the exploration is knowing what pleases you. Right, yeah. something to look forward to yeah. during that phase. I remember my uh, older son when he was in like sixth or seventh grade and they separated the uh, boys and girls and their gym teacher who was the sex ed uh, facilitator yes. uh, said, okay, how many of you guys out there have ever masturbated? says, if you haven't, it's the best feeling you're ever going to have. And it was a great way to kind of <laughs> introduce them. Yeah. And all the giggles was like, oh, phew, you know, it's right. not a, yeah. a bad thing. Yeah, and so in this class, you know, if, if you're with your child, you know you'll experience one day you're a son or daughter, now their room is locked. <laughs> right. you know, and instead of knocking doors, say, what are you doing in here? <laughs> yeah. It's a natural process. Let them grow through that and experience that. So what? Know? Don't knock on the door? Don't knock on well, the door. Just, just say like... Unless um, they're exploring privately rather than with, you know, somebody else. Yeah. Okay, so do if you allow, allow locked doors when you have their partners at home? Is this like an individual family value thing? It is. It it's is. It's really interesting. It is. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're my, talking about prescriptive <laughs> in that way. Yeah. My, my niece who had like eight daughters. Wow. And she told the girls, uh, if you have your male friends come over, please do not close the door. And they they close the door. Um, the next of your male partner and um, your male friend comes here, please do not close the door. By the third door, all the doors from the room were taken off the hinges. <laughs> she okay. put curtains in there just so their privacy, right, but they but were not can't. separated ah. from the parents kind of roaming about checking in. So on parents them. kind of need to do that. They have to provide the boundaries. You have to, you have to put your no foot down. No matter how yeah. open you are. Parenting boundaries. is parenting. You need to be the parent. You need to decide what your values are and what rules you're going to enforce. and. Um, go out and get education yourself as well. Do you think there's a double standard with how teenage boys are allowed to bring girls over, but girls you should not, best not to, and, but, you know, don't close doors? You should treat them equally. Should, yeah, but absolutely. Sexism right? is real. Yeah. And women, I mean, that's, have you been watching the Olympics? Have you seen how women's successes are being portrayed as distinct from men's successes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, always. It's, it's everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. and, and it still is part of all the societies at least that I know of. Yeah. Right. So, yes, and then what are we going to do about it? Right. right. We can rail against it, we can ignore it, or we can try to address it um, calmly, yeah. um, but directly. What would you say the hardest thing would be in sex ed for kids would be? You know, if you had to kind of pick one area that was hard to address. What would you think? I would think that it is peer pressure. They get information oh, from respected, respected that peers. That is so true. They because it's they believe, vague, they, you know? they believe they're respected peers, but so much of what their peers tell them is yeah. not accurate. In the high school program, we have exercises where they can actually practice how to say no. Yeah. Okay. And they come like out of the playing? program role yes. playing. Good. You know, we set up scenarios. And by the end of that class session, they are pretty confident that if they ever are Good. in that circumstances, they know how to deal with that. And so, yeah, we teach them to work on their self-esteem, yes. you know, communication, decision-making, problem-solving, mm. all of that comes mm. with. And, and in some I remember, ways, they, yeah. go, they go become sex educators with oh, their peers. Yes, so they, they some of them intervene and come back and tell stories of hearing someone tell, tell something that was wrong, yes. inaccurate, mm. and they're speaking up. In their group, you know, they hear yeah. all this little gossip going Guys on, and, and she'll say, that's oh, not yeah. correct, you know. Okay, yeah. I just attended the OWL program, and this <laughs> is what, I, what is this OWL program? It's at my church, they teach sex at Maybe church, yeah. you know. You talk about well, bodies. it's not, yeah, we don't preach religion, it's just happened to be a place where this program okay. is being offered. Yes. So on that note, can you tell us a little bit about the program that you are going to be uh, uh, focusing on younger for the elementary school kids? It up? is the fourth, what grade? Yeah, four, five, six. Four, five, six. Yeah. So we have curriculum for these various age groups on uh -huh. the one. The next one that's coming up is for four, five, six. It begins in September. Uh -huh. We have a mandatory parents meeting. Mandatory. Go ahead. Parents meeting. Right. And um, we also provide child care. Yeah. It's for all of the all of the classes. And the mandatory meeting is just for the parents to sit in to hear what the program have to offer. 
right. and get a full perspective. Oh, before they choose to before sign they, up. Yeah. Yes. Ah. yeah, it's a great meeting. It's a four hour, but they, that's four. where they can, that's where they can present all their food. questions. <laughs> we do. Lots of food. Yeah, yeah. This program, Double lots drinks. of food. Lots of potlucks and mm -hmm. lots of food. Everybody's do the parents, uh, sorry, discussions engage in conversations about their sexual experiences? Because we that's do. really yeah. quite important to yeah, know. It actually right? does go that way, in part because parents' um, own value systems and what they teach their kids come out of their own life experiences. Mm -hmm. So right. if they've had positive experiences or negative experiences, right. that influences what they... What, how they move in the world. I think culturally too, you mentioned that earlier, Gabe, mm -hmm. I think that's really important because, yeah. you know, let's say coming from a Chinese family, you know, we were brought up to feel like you shouldn't be walking around naked right. and, you know, right. sex is a dirty word yes. and God forbid you talk about it yeah. over mm -hmm. dinner. One of the great, funniest exercises we have in the parents, um, the, the first class, is um, um, we say, we, bring, we say the word penis. Right. And, and now, <laughs> and yeah, and all like, <laughs> yeah. okay, now let's share, that's the title, penis. We want slang words, we want street okay. words, that's and great. we want scientific yeah. words of penis. Great. And yeah. the group starts off like, <laughs> <laughs> by the middle of the exercise, they're just yelling it out, we're yeah. laughing, going, yeah. um, dick, you know. <laughs> 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 you know? Right. And his 60 year old grandma, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, whatever word she was, yeah, you know, yeah, and we'd laugh, <laughs> a, we'd laugh, we'd like, oh, I never great. heard that. Right. Like, no, that's a Chinese word. That's a Filipino <laughs> word. Yeah. And by then, we're warmed up to the next exercise at that point. Yeah. yeah. So we really What's get to What's the Hawaiian word for penis? Um, Punani laka. is laka. 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 L-A-K. And that's proper? Yeah. Oh, okay. Laka. Was there a slang Hawaiian word for it that we should know about? Oh, lots of Filipino and lots of different, yeah, for the Hawaiian. Come on, spill it out. We need to know. The parents need to be educated. I should have Come brought their list. Oh, <laughs> Come to class. Yeah. Sorry. You There's see how good she is? Yeah. <laughs> but that's a nice warm-up exercise yeah. for the parents. Oh, so the parents yell it out, but the kids don't get to yell it out. They're in their own class. They're but having the, kids the same do their exercise. Own yeah, for this age group. That, yeah. That's, oh, that's, that's, that's yes. your junior that high That would not be yeah. good to have yeah. a nine-year-old coming home and saying, yeah. You know? But it's amazing. <laughs> you bring the list together, and the, the seven, nine-year-old, their list is like 18, and the parents, their list is like 42. <laughs> you know? We know all the slang words and stuff. all the street We've words. We've all been there. And so anyway, going back to yeah, our okay, program. Sorry. Go ahead. No, go on. Uh, note that uh, the program is um, starts October second okay. uh, through November twenty seven. It's every Sunday from one to three, and um, how do people sign up? They can contact the Unitarian the First uh, Unitarian Church. Okay. And um, I left the website with uh, Zuri. Okay. And uh, I'll leave a phone contact. Uh, we should we should have had a phone contact on here maybe too. Well, people can get the website and know more about it, but it's coming up in October. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything, they can ask questions. Absolutely, and, uh, they can ask questions. We encourage questions all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. Okay, well, that's fabulous. I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg in learning about your bodies and how you view it and sexuality amongst your peers and everyone. So I think this is a wonderful topic. Thank you, both of you, for sharing your views. Thank you for Good having us. Good luck with the workshop. I think it must be fun and, and stimulating for both of you as well. It is. Hold, it's wonderful. How old are your children? My uh, 11. 13 and 16 so okay, yeah then. it's always a sensitive issue you may want to look into the program it really <laughs> really it takes a lot of okay. pressure off uh -huh. you right. and, i will and definitely look involved. into it and, and and enrich myself as well as my kids and say that penis is not a bad word yeah all right that's all for today to take it with you and enjoy the rest of the day we'll see you next week